Hello and welcome to another lesson about language development. Um, in the last lesson we talked about um, the fact that we want to study infants and their knowledge of, of language, especially newborns when they, when they are first born. We want to know if they've worked on learning language while they were in the womb. And um, we talked about some ways that you can access that knowledge, that you as a researcher can um, essentially ask an infant, do you know the difference between this if the, lang if the, if the, if the infant doesn't use language, right? Um, uh, and we talked about how uh, there are some ways that you can do sort of physical testing on infants, but mostly those are sort of like not as good because they're really, it, with newborn babies, you really don't want to be sticking them with a bunch of needles and stuff. Um, and so the main way that linguists study how much uh, infants and, and newborns know about, about the language that they're learning um, is by uh, looking at how they suck on a pacifier. Um, and, and as we'll see, as infants get a little bit older, there are more methods that you can use. But for real newborns, it's basically pacifiers is about it. Um, and this is the first of the two major procedures we're going to talk about. This is a way to design an experiment on newborns. And this is called the contingent sucking rate procedure. So to study this procedure, to, to um, show you an example of this procedure, we're going to look at an example study that used this procedure, which is an early study in um, infant language acquisition um, uh, by DeCasper and Pfeiffer in 1980. Um, and the question that they were asking is, do newborn babies recognize their mother's voices? Right. And this is um, something that they they were they were able to access infants at three days old. Right. So you don't I mean, there, there are reasons that you can't study really, really fresh newborn babies. But basically, if they're three days old, that's pretty darn fast. You know, uh, if they haven't been do doing learning in the womb, um, it's pretty quick. Either way, it's very interesting that within three days, you'd be able to recognize your mother's voice if it's true. Right. Um, so essentially, what you have to do with each child is you want to measure their reaction to that's my mom I hear versus that's not my mom I hear, right? And and they are going to have to choose between, do I want to hear my mom? Do I want to hear not my mom? And you just want to figure out, you know, is there a difference between a child's reaction to hearing their mom and hearing a woman who's not their mom? Um, uh, importantly, when you're doing a study using this paradigm, each child can have both reactions um, uh, just at different times. So that's something that's important. So the way that you set up this research paradigm is you give a child a pacifier and you can use that pacifier. That pacifier is hooked up to a machine that allows you to measure how fast the child is sucking on that pacifier. Are they sucking really fast or really slow? And then you, you set it up so that you're playing sounds and that when the child sucks faster, um, something one thing happens and when they suck slower another thing happens so sucking faster gets you something different right and there's several possibilities when we're doing um, this particular study there's several possibilities for what might happen when you do this right so the first possibility is you've got a child set up um, so that when they suck faster on that pacifier their mom talks and they like to hear their mom talk and so they suck really fast on that pacifier to keep their mom talking right the other possibility is, you know, maybe they're used to hearing their mom talk um, and and when they suck faster, when this group of children sucks faster, they get that other lady talking, right? They hear that other lady talking and maybe they'd rather hear that other lady talk because it's new, right? And, and so they're sort of interested in it, right? And so maybe they will suck faster or slower for the other lady, right? Um, either way, whichever direction the child goes, they are clearly recognizing the distinction between their mother's voice and that other lady's voice, right? So these are our noticers, right? So if they have a distinction between the two and they have a clear preference for one or the other, they are noticing the difference between their mother's voice, which means that they must be able to recognize their mother's voice. Okay, and then there's a third group. There's a third possibility of what might happen. If a baby can't tell the difference between those two voices, then why would they alter their normal sucking pattern? Right. So they'll just keep going at the same speed as if nobody was talking. Right. They'll, they'll you know, they just do one thing. It doesn't matter if um, if if it's my mother's voice or not. Right. So these are our non noticers. Right. So let's talk about how we go about actually setting up an experiment. Like this. 
right? So the first step that we have to do is a pretest for each child. We have to figure out what is their base sucking rate. This is called the base sucking rate phase sometimes. Um, and so the first step is to figure out how fast is normal for a child. Now, in this um, circumstance, you have a child who is not hearing any speech, right? So, um, so the, if you're not playing any anybody talking, how fast does a child normally suck on that pacifier, right? This is going to be your, your base sucking rate. That's what this is called. So after you test the base sucking rate for that child, you have to test them in two conditions. Um, and this is in the test phase. So the test phase of an experiment is where you're like testing the thing that you actually want to learn about. Um, this pretest uh, is not the thing that you actually want to learn about. You don't really care, you know, what the base sucking rate for each of these children is, right? You really care about whether they alter that rate based on who they're hearing speak. Um, so the first condition that you're going to test children in is um, that if they suck faster, they get mom's voice. Um, and the second condition is that if they suck faster, they get that other lady's voice. Now, the reason that you have to test both these conditions is because there's a chance that maybe when children hear a voice, they suck faster. And it doesn't matter whose voice they're listening to, right? They're just sucking faster when they hear a voice. And that just is a, a trait of babies, maybe, right? And so since we did our pretest on a baby that's not hearing any voice, you can't just test um, suck faster for mom. You have to test suck faster for mom versus suck faster for the other lady and see if there's a difference between those two, right? Um, and so what you do then, once you've done those two tests, is you measure, are they going to suck faster or slower? Um, so let's look at some results of this study. So these are the results published in the original study. And this um, graphic is a little bit confusing, so I'm going to explain the portions of this graphic, and then we can talk about what it means. So um, each number on the side here is one su subject's base sucking rate. So that all of these numbers, each of those numbers indicates an individual baby, right? So the, the fastest average sucker is the 5.8 one, and the slowest average sucker is uh, the 1.01, .01, right? So that's their average rates of sucking. Um, uh, and then up here, we have how much different was the kid's sucking rate from their average. And this doesn't care about um, whether they're sucking faster or slower. This is just how much different on average was the rate, right? Um, so you could be on either side. And the side that you're on is whether that difference is in favor of mom speaking or in favor of the other lady speaking, right? So if you're sucking um, faster in favor of your mother or slower in favor of your mother, the bar is going to be on the right-hand side. Um, and if you're sucking faster in favor of the other lady or slower in favor of the other lady, your bar is going to be on the left-hand side. Now you can see all the bars are on the right-hand side, which means that all the children are sucking in favor of their mother's voice, or all of them except the bottom two, um, for whom it, it, it wasn't uh, significantly different. So the difference between the dark and light bars here are that the dark bars show um, that that the child is sucking more slowly in order to keep mom's voice going, right? So they're sucking more slowly on their pacifier because they'd rather hear mom's voice. Um, and, and, the, and the empty bars are that they're sucking more quickly because they'd rather hear mom's voice, right? So in, for some of the children, you'll notice you don't have both bars, and that's presumably because they had to throw out some of their data because something went wrong, right? But you can see both bars for several of these children, and they're altering both times they're altering in preference of their mother's voice. So the conclusions that we can draw are that for eight out of the 10 infants who did something significantly different, they altered their sucking rate in order to hear their mother's voice, which means that newborn babies can recognize their mother's voice and would rather hear it than some random lady, which is, which is an interesting conclusion, right? So we've now used this procedure. Um, we've seen how to use this procedure in order to actually get results. Um, so the essential pieces of this procedure to take away from this lesson, so that if you want to design an experiment like this, you can do so, are these. So first, um, you have to make it so that sucking at a different speed um, from the infant's normal rate produces one of two stimuli, right? So you've got, on, on one side in this experiment, we had the other lady, and on one side, we had the mother's voice, right? So those were our two stimuli, um, and 
and what determined which one a child heard was how fast or slow they were sucking. Second piece is if the infant can tell those pieces, the, the difference between those two stimuli and prefers one over the other, um, they will suck differently from their base rate in one direction or the other. Right, so they'll either suck faster or slower in order to hear the one that they want to hear. Um, so there is an important assumption here that they have to prefer one, right? So the child actually wants to hear one of those and not the other one, right? And so there is a possibility that you might test something, not see any results, right? There, it looks like maybe they can't tell the difference, but really all that it is is they don't care about the difference, right? So um, you can only you can only get results if the infant cares about the difference. Um, three. Um, if an infant can't tell the difference or doesn't care, right, they'll suck at the normal rate, right? They won't alter, or maybe they'll alter in the same direction no matter what the stimulus is, right? So we talked about that, that maybe all babies just like to suck faster when they hear a voice, and so they, they can't tell the difference between the two voices, but they all can tell that's a voice, right? And so they're all going to suck faster um, no matter what, right? So you have to t test them in both directions, um, and as long as you test them in both directions, you should be able to tell whether they can tell. Um, and so this is the last point, is that you need to test them in both conditions, both the um, suck fast for mom and the suck fast for random lady um, conditions in order um, to make sure that someone speaking isn't what's making them suck faster. So, so this is the contingent sucking uh, procedure. Um, uh, and in the next lesson, we'll talk about um, other ways that you can do similar testing.